I was Christian. I was very much raised in the churches. I was literally brainwashed to that extent that I literally thought all Muslims were terrorists. It's so sad because what you are taught on social media about, you know, Islamist terrorism, but you know, Alhamdulillah, with what has been happening over in Palestine, now people's eyes are starting to open up. They see these innocent moms, innocent children losing their lives. And you can't sit here and say that we're terrorists anymore. I ended up going to church. And whenever I would ask for information, questions about my faith, no one could like truly answer them. I would get answers, but they logically did not make sense for me. How did you feel when you heard Surah Al-Fatiha for the first time? Well, that was literally, I felt like a little girl who found her way back home again. And when I heard the Arabic prayer, I knew, like, you just, you know in your heart. But I literally cry every time because it's like the first time I took my Shahada. It all just hit me so beautifully in the heart and I felt at home, alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Rebecca. Thank you so much for accepting our invitation. As Eternal Passenger, we're very happy to have you with us. I want to start with, who is Rebecca? Can you tell us briefly about your life? Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so I'm super excited to be here with you guys today, inshallah. I grew up in a very small white town. And then I ended up moving to the city when I was a young girl and lived in the city when I was a teenager. So I basically grew up in a very, very like white dominant town. When I became a young teenager, alhamdulillah, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts us in circumstances. So I ended up having some hardship in my life at that time. And I ended up leaving home. And the reason that I mentioned this is because this ties into my career. And growing up, Growing up in a white town, I ended up going to church. Uh, so that was a very strong foundation in my life, subhanAllah. And, you know, now, as you know, I am Muslim, alhamdulillah. How was your life in regards to faith? What was your faith before? I was Christian, Protestant Christian. Uh, I was very much raised in the churches up until really I was eight years old. So, you know, from the time I was born, I was in the churches every Sunday. My uncles and cousins, they're pastors in the churches. My grandfather's on the choir. My grandmother is always out doing uh, charity work and good deed work for the churches. So it was such a strong foundation in me. And I absolutely loved religion from a very young age. And then my mom got married and I moved away and we didn't really go to the church much. So my grandma really put that foundation into me. So when we moved away, I always had that like strong belief still in me. And I held on to that throughout my entire life. And whenever I would ask for information, questions about my faith, no one could like truly answer them. Like it was, I just felt like I was hitting like a brick wall all the time. Like I would get answers, but they logically did not make sense for me. So that's a little bit about how I was raised in the churches and how I grew to really love the prophets, you know, in Islam, subhanAllah, from a very young age. As Eternal Passenger, we need your support. We are an organization of women volunteers who aim to spread the message of Islam all over the world. Our videos have helped thousands of people change their lives, convert to Islam, give up haram, start praying, wear hijab, learn to read the Quran, by donating through the thanks button and becoming a member of this family by clicking the join button, you can have your share in all these good deeds. Donate to Eternal Passenger. What was the thing that made you question your beliefs? Was it an event or a thought and when was it? Yeah, it was definitely, it was a thought. It was... Whenever I remember, I would hear the church or my grandma pray, they would always say in Jesus name, you know, amen, like astaghfirullah. And it never felt right with me. It never made sense. So even as a Christian, even though I was taught to always say that, I would never say in Jesus name, I would say in God's name. So I had that instilled in me in a very young age. And in the Bible, there's a lot of, you know, contradictory as well. It's very contradictory in the sense where it's like, the Bible will say, like, you know, God cannot be human, but then somehow Jesus, peace be upon him, is human. The Trinity never fully made sense, nor could I really find it properly explained within the Bible. 
So all of these were big question marks. And whenever I would ask, you know, my grandma or my uncles, they would be able to give me very like little explanation. But again, the logic side of it, it just wasn't connecting like my heart, my head, everything. It just was not connecting. So I always had that question in my heart, like literally from when I went to Sunday school, I would talk to the pastors about it. And I remember I even got a package in the mail and like, I'm telling you, like, it was literally about probably that thick explaining how like Jesus is God, you know, stuff it a lot. What was your view of Islam back then? Did you have any prejudices? So for me, I definitely had so much prejudice and bias and I had fear towards Muslims because I remember when 9-11 happened, I was at a restaurant with my mom. We had just moved into our new house. You know, we didn't have any furniture, so we went to eat. And when we were sitting there, we knew that the first tower had gone down, but we literally watched on the news the second tower going down. Now with watching this and because of the news outlets, they instilled so much fear into me. So I went from being like 13, 12, so I 12 years old when this happened, up to 20, two years old when I met my first Muslim person. That was the first time I ever had a real encounter with a Muslim. And I remember when this person told me that they were Muslim, I had this like impending like doom and terrible sickening feeling in my heart like, oh my gosh, like this person's a terrorist. Like I gotta run away now. I was literally brainwashed to that extent that I literally thought all Muslims were terrorists. But you know, Alhamdulillah, with what has been happening over in Palestine, now people's eyes are starting to open up. They see these innocent moms, innocent children losing their lives, innocent men, you know? And you can't sit here and say that we're terrorists anymore. How can tiny babies and innocent children be terrorists? But Alhamdulillah, as you said, people's prejudices are starting to break. And we are hearing more and more wonderful news of people who are getting to know the Quran and true Islam due to the resistance of the Palestinians. Alhamdulillah, in our madrasa, we are also trying to support them with our prayers and the efforts we make to amplify their voices. May Allah help our brothers and sisters there and honor them with the most beautiful places in paradise. Have you ever encountered any experiences in the past that may have led you to Islam? I met, I started to meet more and more people who were Muslim, right? And one person I remember it stood out to me said, well, your Bible has changed like so many times over the years and our Quran has not changed in 1500 years. And I was like, hmm. And then this person's like, they're also all the same prophets. And I was like, hmm, no, no, this is impossible. I studied world religion. I took world religion in high school. I took it in college. I took it in university. They never taught us this. So I totally just was like in complete disbelief of that. So I went home and I started to do research and subhanAllah, that's when I realized, okay, yeah, it is all the same prophets and it is literally just a continuation, really, in my opinion, the correct, you know, Abrahamic religion, belief in one God, a continuation of Judaism, Christianity and Islam. How did your journey begin? Well, my journey began when I learned about essentially the same, the Quran not changing 1500 years ago and then also the same prophets. And then I started to study into it. And I studied into Islam for seven months because I really, like, I knew in my heart that like, this was the right path, but I knew that there was gonna be a lot of obstacles um, along the way, right? When it comes to family, when it comes to changing your lifestyle and so, so, so much more that comes along with being Muslim. It's just the reality of it. It's a completely different lifestyle than Western society. So I studied into Islam for seven months. And subhanAllah, I never listened to the Arabic prayer though when I was studying into it, right? What made you convinced to research Islam? Was it just a curiosity? It was curiosity, yeah. It was, it was literally purely curiosity. And the fact that like the same prophets and the Quran has not been changed, that was literally what drew me to it. Because as I said, as a child, I grew up loving the prophets, loving all the prophets' stories. You know, they inspired me throughout my life. They kept me strong in so many different aspects. And to hear that it is all the same. And because of the fact that I was be around more Muslim people now in the Toronto area, that's in Canada, I started to realize like they're really nice. And like this one Muslim person had such a like nice heart. And I was like, okay, like I got to research more into this because this is not what I was told on Muslims were about. SubhanAllah.
What impressed you the most about Islam? It is definitely the first time I heard the Arabic prayer when I got the goosebumps. It would be the rights that were given to women 1500 years ago and the scientific evidence in the Quran as well. That was huge for me because I like facts. It's very factual. And really just, just the way the Quran is completely written and how it just, it's so smooth, you know, from like literally surah, verse to verse. It's not like the Bible. You're not confused. You can follow it. You can understand it. And it literally talks directly to your heart. SubhanAllah. The Quran literally, it just, it hits you right in the heart when you read it. SubhanAllah. How did you feel when you heard Surah Al-Fatiha for the first time? That was... Like I mentioned it, literally, I felt like a little girl. I felt like a little girl who found her way back home again. I felt like vulnerable and and like I had been lied to my entire life, right? I was following something that was completely false. And it was it was almost like a sigh of relief, like literally a mother, you know, or a child finding her mother after so long of not seeing her and just feeling the warmth and the comfort and the safety and you know knowing that everything is going to be okay subhanallah what was the last step that convinced you to islam i didn't become muslim for anybody else that was strictly for me so i think that that's very important too right when when we're reverting that we're not reverting for other people we're reverting because we feel it in our heart and once you feel it in your heart, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to put knowledge in there, continues to help you grow, you know, continues to soften your heart as well, right? As we know in Islam, the more you sin, the more you backbite, the more, you know, you have those character traits, you get black dots on your heart, right? And as you start to work on yourself and become a better Muslim, subhanAllah, those black dots get removed and your heart becomes more pure, mashallah. How did you feel when you took Shahada? Could you please describe that moment in detail for us? We were at a gathering. Uh, it was a family gathering, mashallah. And, you know, we had my friend's family there and my family, they were coming. And basically there was going to be a man there. And through the iman, I was going to do my shahada that day. My family had still not arrived. And I was honestly so nervous to do it in front of them. So I actually ended up doing it with, uh, with my friend's father, mashallah. I took my shahada there, I had my witnesses. And the feeling that I felt, like, it, it, again, it felt like when I heard the prayer for the first time, like this young child, vulnerable, innocent, finding her way back home, you know? And then in the Quran too, you know, you think of, and I have perfected your religion for you today. And subhanAllah, that's just like literally how I felt at that exact moment. I cried for a good 30 minutes after, collected myself because my family was coming. And then when they came, I announced also that I had become Muslim that day. Alhamdulillah. How did your family and the people around you react to your conversion to Islam? My family, you know, my dad, it was, it was a good like hour conversation and, you know, just promising that I'll be okay, dad. My dad's biggest worry, and again, it's not propaganda, is that I was going to be on the next plane, you know, going over to uh, be a wife of ISIS over there. That's what my dad's thinking. And that is horrible. But that is my dad's reaction, right? And, you know, over the years, alhamdulillah, I definitely was able to show my dad what Islam really was. My mom, she actually kind of accepted it the best, I would say, in a lot of aspects. She didn't ask too, too much questions, just said, you know, you're doing this for yourself, okay. And she was good with it. Now my grandmother, my lovely grandma, she was like, she's literally my best friend, like actually my best friend. She did not take it so good, you know. She truly believed that the devil got a hold of me and that was it. And she kept trying to bring me back and she still tries a lot to bring me back. How does it feel to be a hijab girl in a non-Muslim country? Living in a non-hijabi country as a hijabi girl, it's been, it's been good for me, like overall, alhamdulillah. And I think that has a lot to do with the way I talk, the way I converse with people, how I'm so open, how... So that definitely helps a lot. So people, they're always interested in talking and learning more about me and, and why I became Muslim. And that has opened up the doors for so many people. You know, not only that, but um, even when you go to the protests uh, downtown Toronto, 
you'll see like a lot of non-Muslim people and they even come up to me and they're like, thank you me for being there. Because I, I used to sell a lot also Palestinian gear and we were donating money directly to Gaza through that. I remember I put on the hijab. I was going to pick up my grandmother. I was so scared of her reaction. It was winter. So I literally, I took my winter coat. I put on my hood. I like tied it like as tight as I could. When I picked her up from her husband's car to get in my car, I waited, eh? I kept my hood on like the whole time for like 10 minutes in the car while we're driving. My grandma looks at me and she's like, are you going to take your hood off? I was like, so grandma, I have something to tell you. I'm like, and you're not going to like this very much. <laughs> so I ended up taking down my hood and I said, you know, I decided to put on the hijab. She was not happy. I mean, she stayed with me for, you know, that week. God bless her. She, you know, took care of my son, um, but she was not happy. And, you know, she, we didn't talk for two years after that. But, you know, it's uh, it's the new over Dean, right? At the end of the day, we know what we're working towards. And I'm going to have to stand alone on the day of judgment. My grandma's not going to be there for me. My family's not going to be there for me. How and where did you find peace? My peace came from the Quran and came from understanding hardship and came from a lot of, you know, Surah Taha and just knowing your purpose. Like, why are we here in this dunya? We're here to be tested. You know, we're not here. Of course, we want to enjoy ourselves. We have to have fun. We have to, you know, joke and laugh and stuff like that, you know, smile at Sunnah. But at the end of the day, we're still here for a test. So I always just stayed focused on my end goal. And I knew very, very well because of being alone so much, so, so many times in my life that the only one that I can truly, truly rely on is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, and I truly believe that there's always wisdom behind everything, right? And even, even within, you know, my, my separation, I truly believe that I was put in that to really understand I only need to put my reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and no one else. Because at the end of the day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who is going to protect my heart, who is going to guide my heart, who is also going to give ease to my heart. How did you manage to keep your faith in a non-Muslim country? I think that really comes down to when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts Islam into your heart. And when you continue to seek knowledge of Islam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to guide you, right? The more knowledge you seek, the more you pray, the closer you become to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts to become, you know, your eyesight, the ears you hear with, the tongue you speak with. And that is so very much true. So for me, I always just focus on what is our goal in this life, right? I'm always thinking of the akhirah. I'm always doing the dhikr. So I'm always having that remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, of course, our deen, as we know, you know, our deen kind of goes like this, right? So sometimes it's very high, sometimes it's lower, subhanAllah. But me, I just, I always remember what the end goal is. And if I feel like my deen is kind of dropping, that's when I really start to, you know, do more dhikr, sit down, read more Quran, right? So for me, I would always suggest, especially when people first become Muslim, Practice one thing you want to do within 30 days and focus on that one character trait. Once you've achieved that in 30 days, move on to the next one because it takes 30 days to develop that consistency, that reputation, and for, for it to become second nature, right? So for instance, if you're Muslim and you want to start backbiting, right? Take one month, you know, pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah takes us out of your heart and work on one month of no backbiting. And you'll be absolutely amazed after that 30 days how much you've progressed. And then you move on to the next. So it's about the baby steps too. What's the verse in the Quran that has influenced you the most? So the verse in the Quran is definitely, and I have perfected your religion for you today. Every time, it doesn't matter where I am, but whenever I read that in the Quran, I get a tear right now, but I literally cry every time because it's like the first time I read and the first time I took my shahada, it all just hit me so beautifully in the heart and I felt at home, alhamdulillah. How do you balance being successful both your career and your religious deeds? Religion and work, many, many years ago, I actually started to blend them together and that comes with the intention of why you're doing things. So for instance, when I would take care of a patient, I would go into the patient's room and my intention was to do it for the patient. And then also, you know, because you feel good and rewarded when you do something good also within yourself, you feel like you've done good. But then you learn that you need to actually 
go in there with the intention of doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first. So once I learned this concept, I very much just incorporated all my intentions of what I do, how I talk to people, how I interact with people. Even if I'm super busy and I don't have time really to help that patient at that moment, I will still, in a lot of aspects, for the intention of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, try my very best to help that person at that exact time. After witnessing what is happening in Gaza, many non-Muslims have become interested in Islam. How do you see the future of Islam in the world? You see, and you've seen it a lot now too, a lot of people are actually reverting because of what has been happening over in Palestine. And as a river online, I get so many messages as well from people who are not Muslim yet, interested, wanting to learn. I get follows from so many non-Muslim people as well, uh, other women. And it just makes my heart so, so happy to see this because it shows that bit by bit, we are showing the world that we are a peaceful religion. We are loving religion. We stay away from sin. We stay away from evil. All we want to do is live in peace and make it to the Ahira, inshallah, and make it into Jannah, inshallah. If you had a chance to talk to our Prophet, peace be upon him, what would you like to say to him? I would literally just, like, I would just want to thank our Prophet وسلم, for everything that he did, for all the good that he brought into this into this dunya for guiding us to the proper religion, mashallah, and also, you know, for being there on the day of judgment for us and interceding, subhanAllah. I would just, gratitude, so, so, so much gratitude, so much gratitude towards everything, everything that our Prophet وسلم, lived through and did, all the hardships. If you had a chance to speak to all non-Muslims in the world, what would you like to say to them? To all my dear non-Muslims around the world, I can promise you that Islam is not bad. I can promise you we are not terrorists. I can promise you Islam is a religion of peace. If you didn't know, Islam is actually really just a continuation of the Torah and the Bible. In the Quran, we are taught as Muslims that we must believe and know that the Torah and the Gospel got sent down from the one God, but it has changed over time. If you didn't know also, every single prophet within the Quran is the same as the Bible, mashallah. So people around the world who have Islamophobia, I challenge you, I truly challenge you to actually go open up a Quran, sit down with yourself, and then come back and let's have a real discussion as to what Islam is. Thank you so much for your time. It was such a pleasure to meet you, sister. As eternal passenger, we really enjoyed listening to your inspiring story. It was so, so lovely to meet you as well. Thank you for having me. And I look forward to chit-chatting again in the future, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.